You made it to part two of the behind the scenes installment of Grey's Anatomy post-op. In part one, we talked with the crew, but you know I wouldn't leave you hanging without getting you some behind the scenes scoop from some of your favorite faces. Speaking of faces. Uh. Damn, I'm in distress. <laughs> you know him as Dr. Owen Hunt. And we all love him, Kevin McKidd. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Good to nice see you. Nice to see you. Let's jump right in. Sure. How'd you get to Grey's? I'd met Shonda and Betsy the year before when they were casting for private practice. And I got a phone call literally saying, Shonda wants to meet you again. I was actually in Bucharest at the time doing a movie. I was flying back to surprise my son for his seventh or eighth birthday. And I had literally 24 hours to come and see him. Shonda was like, I, we need to meet you on that day. And I said, oh, sorry, I can't. It's my, son, it's my son's birthday. And I thought, well, that's my chance is gone. You know, like, the, that's my one shot. Later, I remember Shonda saying that, that, that she said that kind of made her kind of sit up and take notice. And then we met and we talked about this character, Owen Hunt. And she said she had this rough idea of what he may or may not become and what he, you know, what his history might be, but she wasn't sure. I make mistakes. Guys die by my hand, good guys. Guys who are fighting for their country in the desert. I don't know everything. Nobody does. So I make mistakes and I learn. And the next time I don't make that mistake again. So the next time, the next guy, that guy, he lives. How did you prepare for the PTSD? When did you find that out? Still in my trailer, I have a stack of books about um, post-traumatic stress disorder. I felt a real responsibility and still do to represent veterans who have suffered from PTSD. You know, it's a good thing to show on a show like this somebody who has been really damaged by a war event and how they can rebuild their life and move on. I mean, he became chief of this hospital. Right. He got married a couple of times. The two marriages haven't worked so far, but he still has, is functioning and being successful as a human being. Mm -hmm. Those early episodes with Sandra Oh, when you know he was very traumatized and strangling San uh, Christina and coming back from that and falling in love with somebody that you'd actually hurt hurt right. was a really interesting quite a dark storyline to tell and very brave i think i'm sorry you're scared of me i don't want to be you know because i think there's a lot of stigma around ptsd so i think that's been partly our responsibility in showing that there is a path forward and there is a life beyond ptsd you also direct many episodes of Grey's. Yeah, I have now. I'm not sure how many I've directed. How did that come about? So I started to kind of ask people in Shonda and Rob Korn and, you know, different people here if they would be open to me shadowing and following directors. And they, they were, and really supportive of the idea. Just as I was finishing that, they did a webisode series that season. And they said, we want you, Kevin, to be the director of these five episodes of the webisodes, which were five minute long little skits. Just as I was finishing my editing on the webisodes, I was sat on this stage and I was doing an interview kind of like this one. And Rob Korn walked down, our producer, and on camera while I'm being interviewed like this, walks up to me and says, hey, so um, I just want you to know that you're gonna be directing the, the big show. Uh, the next episode, you start prep as soon as this interview's over. And I was blown away, you know? Every actor I've ever spoken with says the best directors were also actors at one point. Yeah. Because they come from that point of view and they know how to speak to the actors. Did you find that that was helpful for you? And I think actor directors are less technical. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not up on the lens sizes and exactly the technical mumbo jumbo of a mm. camera. I do know how to help actors get to the place you need them to get to, if you know what I mean. They like feeling like they're really in their characters and in their, and being helped. So I think that's what I can bring as a director. I hope that's what I bring. That's what I try to bring. How is it directing yourself? I don't mind it now, but initially it was quite scary. And action. Go ahead, Dr. Hunt. Because you're having to use two parts of your brain. It's a bit like trying to, I don't know, cook two recipes at the same time, you know, right. like trying to do sushi and bake a cake at the same time, you know, <laughs> that's a terrible analogy. But <laughs> what about your experience being directed by other actors? Yeah, Chandra, she, I love Chandra directing. She's very laid back, but very focused. You know, she was one of the people who inspired me to chase that dream because I saw her doing it. Everybody has their own energy and their own style and that comes out in the way they direct. 
Because directing is a very intense job, so it kind of brings out, it kind of amplifies your personality. I'd be interested to hear what people think of my directing style, I'm like a crazy Scotsman. My hair goes crazy when I'm directing, because I pull my hair and I'm like thinking all the time, so my hair's always like, it's like I've just put my fingers in the, in the plug socket. You heard it here first, crazy director here. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping by. Good to see you. <laughs> Very good to see you, man. Next up is the heart surgeon who embodies one of Grey's Anatomy's biggest curveballs. Amelia Shepard, do you know Dr. Maggie Pierce? Weird, you're the second Dr. Shepard I've met today. Derek is my brother. I'm sorry, is everyone in this room somehow related? <laughs> okay. I'd like to welcome Kelly McCreary. It is my pleasure to be here chatting with you, my friend. Many happy moments have happened in this house, this house that we are sitting in right now. A lot of pivotal bonding moments have been shared. Give us a little bit of background. How'd you get to Grace? I got to give all credit to the goddess Linda Lowy. She cast me in Scandal. And then when this role came along, she, you know, I guess pitched it to my people. And um, I did not know that it was a series regular role. I just thought it was like a recurring thing on Grey's. So you had no idea at the time that you were going to be the love child of Ellis Grey and Richard Weber? No, I had no idea at all. Meredith Grey. She's your sister. Yeah, you figured that out too. So in the same house that you've had all these happy moments, we also got to experience the saddest moment in Maggie's life so far, where she lost her mother, portrayed by the marvelous Latanya Richardson. How did that come about, and how did you prepare for it? Beginning of season 13, I found out that we were gonna meet Maggie's mom, and I was like, oh my god, amazing. How and where and when is this gonna happen? And Bill Harper said to me, Maggie's mom's gonna come to Seattle, and she's gonna come to the hospital, and she's going to get sick and die. And I was like, <laughs> Of course. I'm very grateful to the writers for giving me the opportunity to play that storyline. It was really a challenge. I had a great scene partner. It was fun. It was the whole gamut of emotions and heartbreak. It was a great pleasure. Never make yourself small for anyone. Be your own person. And try wearing a little lipstick. You know, Mom, if you keep going at this rate, you're going to run out of advice before tomorrow. So what about Maggie's relationship entanglements? Because mm. people are watching. Yes, yes. <laughs> Who are you telling? So she started with DeLuca. Riggs was a little false start. So I kind of thought of that relationship with DeLuca as Maggie starting over completely, doing something completely different than she had in the past, just something fun and sexy and flingy. And then, of course, she falls for him, which I, she also wasn't expecting to do. And, um, you know, is pretty humiliated <laughs> by the whole thing. But, you know, she's growing. She's learning. She's, that was, I think, a very good lesson for her. I think it was important to sort of be humbled a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everybody can benefit from that. I'm fine now, but I wasn't. You dropped me like I was severely burning your hand and then never said a word about it. It was kind of humiliating. Right, yeah, I just shouldn't have. Done that. And then I guess with Riggs, you know, he just wasn't into her. That relationship was more revelatory about how Maggie processes things when she is not in control of all, having all the information. Mm -hmm. She wants to be able to do with the information what she's going to do with it and make educated choices. What are some of your favorite moments being on the show? Actually, it took place right in this very room. Meredith's here, Amelia's over there, Callie is there, and Maggie is there and they're all getting drunk. And Maggie has like this existential crisis. Oh my God, I'm all alone and I have nothing and no one wants me. You got us, we want you. I can't have sex with you. No. You're a Cylon. This is Galactica. He calls everybody a Cylon and I had no idea what any of that was. And when I did a little Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica research, that was a, a pretty hilarious reference, I thought, for an unexpected. Well, thank you so much for giving us some insight into the character. Keep up the good work. Thank we look you forward so to much. another 300 episodes with you in it. Thanks, Gordon. Many thanks to Kevin, Kelly, and the Grey's Anatomy crew for letting us run around their sets. Check out the Love Grey's Hub at abc.com for more behind-the-scenes scoop and for previous installments of Grey's Anatomy post op and don't forget to come back here next Wednesday for the final installment womp womp, of Grey's Anatomy post-op. All leading up to the monumental 300th episode of Grey's Anatomy. 
But before I go, here's a sneak peek at tomorrow's brand new episode of Grey's Anatomy. Bye. Ugh, I hate being single. I hate it even more than sharing a bathroom. What? I broke up with Karina by accident. I just, I needed some space, like physically in my home because Sophia's coming home, but apparently she thinks that I broke up with her. So now here I am swiping instead of having sex with an Italian orgasm scientist. Well, it's a pretty bad accident. Well, I shouldn't even be dating because I should be getting ready for Sophia to come home. I'm so ready to be dating anyone who does not work at this hospital. Hey, mm -hmm. you guys tendering? Mm -hmm. I set up a profile, but I'm afraid to actually swipe. Oh, it's pretty straightforward. Left for no, right for yes. Well, yes for what? Yes, I'll sleep with you. It's not a binding contract. <laughs> What are you all doing? Standing around, leaning against things. This is a hospital. It's a slow day. What are you doing? <gasps> oh, too young. Way too young. Hello, Idris Elba. You're welcome. Did you just match me? You know, that's a real life, <laughs> actual person. I, I don't get to swipe. Just let me have this moment. <laughs> Pit, I call it. No, I'm trying to get in four. I'm cheap. Sorry, wait, I call it. Catch every season of Grey's Anatomy. Currently available on iTunes.